Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, everyone inside and outside the ballpark to episode eight of the Nova Notes podcast, uh, where we show off VR chat content creators, uh, world creators, avatar creators, and so many more here on the platform. Uh, and with me, I have today. Hello, I'm Lion Turtle, the one of the founders of Metaverse DGen, a VR chat podcast. Who are you? My turn? Yeah, your turn. <laughs> I don't know who I am. Oh, I'm the old, I'm the old, dirty old man, <laughs> dirty old man, I'm the dirty raptor, <laughs> my god, sorry folks, I, I'm known as the, uh, one of the co-hosts for Metaverse Degen with Lion Turtle and all that kind of stuff. And apparently a dirty old man extraordinary. Dirty old man extraordinary. Yeah, I'm dirty old man. No, I'm dirty old. I'm dirty raptor. I, most people just call me raptor. And I don't go by the full nickname, so man, it's just weird going, who the fuck am I? Well, where's my fucking name tag? I don't know who I am. There you go. We gotta put that on there. Oh, uh, but yes. <laughs> Yes, but Lion Raptor, thank you so much for coming on the Nova Notes podcast. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you both here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate us having it. Sorry, <laughs> we're so used to doing both the podcasts, we're gonna have to get used to the the good old uh, uh, VR chat <laughs> lag. <laughs> but yeah, welcome both of you. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you both on. Um, so let's talk. Let's talk Metaverse Degen. So you guys have now hit. Um, you know, two years of doing VR podcasting. Um, so, or at least with Metaverse DGen. So let's take it back to, you know, the original beginnings. You know, what in, what started Metaverse DGen? So Metaverse DGen initially started off by one of our other friends' ideas who came to me and was like, Lion, I want to do a VR chat podcast and I want your help with it. And so it was his idea and he wanted to do like a broadcast kind of thing where a group of friends sit down, talk about something and we would talk about like VR chat goings on. We'd talk about tech, random who, random stuff. And then from there, he gave it to me because he had work and life and stuff pop up and he couldn't run it anymore. Uh, by that point, we were probably almost a few months shy of a year, and then I got overexcited and wanted to do four plus episodes a week. That was when Raptor came on, and I took a break and almost quit. I was like, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. But then a friend of mine and Raptor, Salty Fry, sent me a message one day saying, because he, he left VR chat in order to like pursue his own life, but he would still watch the Metaverse DGen. And he sent me a message out of the blue during that break I took saying, Lion, I feel like I'm with a friend group again when I watch Metaverse Degen. And then from there is when Raptor and I began doing other things like interviews and we expanded out from there and here we are. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's yeah. let, let's get into you then, you know, because you, you joined a little bit later in the game. Um, you know, what was it like, you know, for you starting out with Metaverse Degen? When I first met Lion through Lolly and everything else like this, they were they were doing the broadcast and stuff like this. I sat in a couple of them and watched and stuff like this. And to me, they looked like they needed content and people to talk for talking. And then when Line took completely over and stuff like this, him and I were just bouncing around. We bounced, well, he got bouncing ideas. You know how it is. It's just like bouncing a rubber ball off the wall, and hopefully you can catch it. We we tried this. We tried where we took the group, the our other group that we have, the cursed group, and we brought them in. We sat down, and you're talking. It was a good idea, but it was one of the worst fucking nightmares we had. And it was nothing against them, but trying to get six people to answer it without talking over each other was a fucking nightmare. It was just literally a nightmare. And we sat there and we played with this. And one night we were, me and Lion were just passing ideas. And, you know, he goes, hey, let's try the, we, I uh, threw one a little idea. He was throwing another idea and he go, hey, how about we, we find a content that we both like and then go ask everybody. He goes, okay. So we just hop from world to world. Just ask any Joe that was there going, hey, what do you think of this? What's your opinion on this? Just straight up. And everything, we got some wild answers and everything else like this. And then we turned around and we were do, still doing where we had a group of three, maybe four people just standing, you know, sitting there talking, trying to pick up subjects, just shooting the shit. 
everything else like this and just it, it just got overwhelming it just you could not get an answer of people to work to go down the line even if you told them you know everybody trying to get their scent say something and me and line still do it we still step on each other's toes but it's a little easier than four to six people doing it all at once and you just go back and forth well taking that idea with the setup like that i get lion lion and i were batting around i go hey lion and I, I go lion how about we just interview people that we might do things in vr and he goes you think it'll work and i go what the hell's it gonna hurt what the hell's it gonna goddamn hurt to give it a try get our feet and he was really no i'm not really because at that time he's lying has made a big circle because he was the kind of person he you know he kept pretty too much to himself and all that kind of stuff but he didn't really want any more until you know he wasn't i'm not saying he was a shy guy because he works with the public you know just like i do and everything else he wasn't shy he just didn't want to bother be a bother you know and that's a hard thing and and so forth like this and then it just all of a sudden it started to work we got a a couple more people that what oh yeah i'd like to be interviewed you know and it was people I don't even remember who the f- her f- first single person that that we we took we took I for think, a single just a single. I think th- if I remember correctly, the first some two of the first people we interviewed was um, it was DJ Woke Dago and Tim Boy. I believe were the first yeah. interviews we did, and from yes. there we we brought on uh, Como Dude, a friend of ours who owns a risk a club here in VR chat. And his entire club was very friendly and willing to talk with us. Like within, Oh yeah. We talked to everybody underneath the sun there without mm-hmm. prompting. They even started pushing our content within their own discord through uh, automatic postings through the, through the IP and stuff. And so with those wonderful, amazing group of people, we were capable of like swinging, more people and get more of a reputation and knowing that we're not here like to do uh pull bad things out of people and we're sort of serious and without those people tim boy woke doggo or como dude we we probably wouldn't be anywhere near where we are now Mm -hmm. yeah it was it was great it was really it was great it was really great to have those people and it was funny is we just shot from the hip I told Lion, we just shoot from the hip. He goes, well, should we come up with questions that just get a couple of them and we'll just feed off of it. And we've been doing it since. We haven't changed nothing. Hell yeah. Hello, everyone. Just want to interrupt the video right here. Uh, If you'd like to support me on any of my um, variety of content, uh, I do have a throne as well as a Ko-Fi. So make sure you go check that out. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Let's get back into the video uh so anyway yeah so with uh you know it's it's definitely a you know humble little beginning which is um very awesome to say the least i got i gotta ask you know each of you what was the in your opinion what was the most favorite interview you guys have done uh i'm gonna give you a cliche answer but i'm not saying this to avoid hurting feelings i'm saying this because it's serious i've enjoyed every conversation we've had because the way I see it is, I, one, am learning more about the VR community, which is something I enjoy. Two, I'm also learning things from the VR community, which is another thing I enjoy doing. Because I'd be stupid to say I know everything, and I don't. And there are a lot of people here in VR chat who are a lot more enthusiastic about what their craft is. And Raptor and I get to speak with them, sit down one-on-one, and learn from them on what they do whether they're do- whether they're doing graphic design for clubs or communities whether they're doing djing or building worlds or avatars or uh, running music events or whatever it may be we get to learn some of that stuff which is what i enjoy so with that said but i do even though they're no longer available i do also very much enjoy year one content the pre-interview metaverse degen and because mm. it's kind of like memories. I watch those things and I see the Curse crew back when we all used to hang out very regularly and it just brings back memories. But in terms of like the mm-hmm. interviews and stuff, I enjoy every single person we've brought on and every single interview, regardless of how they performed. Absolutely. No, it's I it is I'll admit it's a little cliche, as you stated, but it, it does hold value. I will say it does hold value. 
I'm pretty much the same way with lying. It doesn't matter. There's so many, we have so many great guests and stuff like this. There's, you can't pick just one, you know, if we could get everybody crammed together and have one call, one hell of a conversation with them all at one time, it'd be great, but it'd be crazy. You know, there is no pick. You can't pick it because their, their personality, who they are, what they do in VR, it's over the, it's over the wall. You just, you just. People, people see in VR, oh yeah, okay, you do this and you do that, okay, and they go, wow, how do you get there and everything else like this, and that's why we do what we do, because there, it, it's an open community that is unreal. It makes what it makes VR is the people that are in here to make it tick for free. Yeah, it sounds like yeah, it's not really free if you think of the gear you get, but you get to meet people from all over the world and you don't even have to step outside your house. It's those people and the information that they dish out no matter what it is. And it don't matter. It's something that if you got your heart into it and desire, it's so enthused to watch how enthused these people are and what they're trying just to do it because they enjoy what they're doing and passing it to whoever and if anybody wants to fall that's their problem there's their setup and if their hearts into it but it's it's their desire that makes vr and that's what i get a kick out of it's their desire to move and a lot of the times when i'm a lot doing a lines asking the questions and stuff like this and he's hitting them on and he's going like the town I'm just the guy standing, little guy standing back in the corner or close to the ground, not ever in the corner, but I'm quiet and people probably wonder, why doesn't he ask a lot of questions? No, because Lion's got the four in the person. We're not, I'm not here trying to say it's on me to asking the question. It's mostly we're here for them and I'm listening because I'm picking up what they're throwing. Lion's already got the next question on the floor and everything else like this and i just let it go i just stand back and listen because i'm learning from what they're throwing and that's more of a kick than anything so it doesn't matter mm. i'd say a motto for raptor and i both kind of agree on over time is when we do our podcasts raptor and i's goal is to be as close to as invisible as we can because it's the content's not about us we're not egotistical and full of ourselves enough we're like we know we're bringing on this really big vr chat player but what about us no that's not where Raptor I want to hit the floor from. Like, we want to know what the content be about them. They are there for the floor. It's the, the podcast is about what they're doing and what they know. Raptor and I have had a few times where people have brought to us saying, we want to know more about you. People, friends of ours or guests we've had on who've watched the content before. But, and that means a lot to Raptor and I, though, with the podcast themselves, as I said, we want to be about, about the person we have sitting across from us. Yeah, no, that's absolutely, yeah, and that's, it's funny because that's actually one of my mottos when it comes to the podcast, so, you know, it's, it's, it's great, great minds think alike, um, you know, it's, it's definitely one of those things that, because I've, I've had people ask the same thing, you know, like, you know, oh, you know, we don't really know much about you, and I'm like, you know, I tell them, I'm like, I work with a bunch of communities, you know, if you really want to know more about what I do, go, go contact these communities, you know, because, I can't, I can make a whole list, you know, of stuff, um, that I do, but you know, the reason why I do the podcast is not for me. It's for the people, the friends I've made, you know, the community leaders and the creators I meet to essentially give them another place to show off what they can do, you know? So I, I can definitely understand that on a, on a level. Uh, it's another one, another, another way, if they want to get to know you, to get to know who that you're interviewing or to get to know you. It, it takes a lot. You get a general idea, not just like me and Lyme, but the person we're talking to, talking to and stuff like this. They want to get a little bit more. Maybe, just maybe, you get that feeling that somebody's going to come over like me, walk up to you and go, hey, I saw your content and everything else, but I want a little more information about you. They're going to ask you straight face to face and get the full feed, not just watching the video, but I'm going to go talk to that person and get more feed and got a general, I got the general from the video, but I want more. 
They want more info. So they're gonna go hunt that person down. They got the name, they can find out where they're at. It's not hard in VR and go and go, I want, you know, I'm interested in what you're doing. Can you help me more? So what you, what you actually, we just did, or you do, is you open the door just enough to crack for them to grab the knob and keep on going through. Is pretty much the situation. And I like to see that a lot. And we get sometimes get people going, hey, I had some, you know, one of our, we get it sometimes once, one, I've had one, somebody that we've interviewed come up and go, I appreciate the video and that, I like that, thank you very much. But I had, I had four or five people come up and talk to me just because of the video and they wanted to know more. Right there's enough. I just did, I did something right there. That's it. I got got pe more people involved and interested in what you're doing, not what we're doing, what you're doing. If they want to find me, it ain't hard to find me roaming around. You know, they want to come talk to me, they'll find, they'll find me and want to know more. They do, they do. If they don't, they don't. That's not a problem. How can you expect people to find you when you're hiding in skulls, lamps, and candles? <laughs> 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 I wish you quit telling people that way. Now we're looking in that place, damn it. You're ruining my hiding area. But and I gotta the funny home. thing is, people you look at those places, you may not even be there. They'll be looking for a person who may not even exist in that instance. <laughs> <laughs> true, very true, very true. Well, Johnny, what are you doing? I'm looking in the candles and lamps for this raptor guy, but I can't seem to find him. Did you check the instance list? Is he here? Oh, no, he's not in here. Why are you mm. looking there again? <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw the world he was in. He was in the world just a week ago. I know he was. It's over in the distance. Yeah. It's like it's your house. You know, it's, you're just there forever. Yeah. You don't go to any other worlds. <laughs> you don't go to any other world, too. You know, we're just we're just gonna ship Raptor out to Uganda and just call it a day. Oh, <laughs> we're gonna ship Raptor to Uganda I in a Uganda Knuckles outfit. <laughs> I, 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 I feel I, you guys just make me sound like I'm a goddamn package that you might get from the military. Like, you your rations? There you go. Know. I can it's see it now. Oh, Uganda God, military will get a box. And come out of it will be wrapped her in a Uganda Knuckles outfit in a comically like inf inflated suits kind of thing. <laughs> and the first thing you'll see is this Raptor's voice going, I don't know the way. <laughs> I don't know the way. Can you show me the way? Please, I'll go your way. Don't, don't, throw, no, don't throw me away. I just got here. Thank you. Come again. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> where is the queen? <laughs> yeah, yeah, where's the queen? <laughs> but yeah no um oh. i was gonna say that's one of the blessings when it comes to you know bigger projects like these is you know you will get recognition um you know thanks to you guys uh and i'm actually going to segue this um you know if you guys don't already know uh, metaverse dgen both line and raptor did interview me on uh their channel uh, i'll put a little clip here on the screen uh but make sure you know go check that out uh if you do want to check out you know my interview with them also make sure to go check out their content over on their channel they do phenomenal interview stuff it's a fun watch highly recommend it um but you're too sweet <laughs> thank you nah. <laughs> but no it's um so with with like all the interviews in mind um you know you you've done over 200 you know interviews which is insane you know compared to like you know a lot of other vr chat related podcasts um w was there ever a time that um you had to like dec not i want to say decline because that seems rude but is there any was not to name names, but was there ever a time you had to like be like, uh, should we allow this person on the podcast or no? Like, is there was there ever like mm. a uh, like one of those times? I guess is what I'm asking. There's a few times we have had that kind of should we, shouldn't we? And it's usually with Raptor and I. It's down to are they there or, or are they serious about what they're telling us? Are they trying to start that VR chat club or are they just doing it for recognition and clout? Because when we're after to have a conversation with someone, I understand a lot of people want to start things for cloud and that's a really good motivator, but we want to see them actually follow through with it. We want to see people actually doing things, not because of clout we get, but we were into actually learning about things. We want to have a conversation like, 
what have you done? What kinds of things do you know? What helped you along the way? What got you started? And st instead of like, oh, I just thought it'd be fun and I want to get all the clout for myself or whatever. And just wrapped in a kind of hesitate with conversations like that a little bit, not because we don't think they're valuable, but we just kind of want to see someone serious. The size of the person doesn't matter to us. It could be a club that's been in VR chat for six months, but the fact that they're running a the fact that they do exist, no matter how large it is, it doesn't matter to us as long as they're following through and doing it. Versus like, it's just something they talk about and not doing, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. No, that... a few people in like, in that general metaphorical sense without naming anybody that wrapped around kind of like, eh, we don't know. No, I, I totally get that. I've only had, uh, I've only had one instance where i've like uh maybe down the line um you know not to name names because they're a lovely individual um but it was one of those like it, it was kind of in the same boat of like you know are they just doing it for the clout um which i, I don't have clout i want to disclaim that i have no clout um i literally only just recently hit 100 subscribers on youtube so you know, thank you guys for the support um <laughs> expensive Yay! clapping um Yay! but the anybody got a candle well, i gotta light this bitch <laughs> <laughs> but you know i i don't want because i i've been burned in the past you know and i as most vr chat players have you know so i don't want someone to essentially you know like you said uh you need to make sure that they're following through with what they're actually doing like that. That's it's funny. Cause uh, once again, it's one of those great minds think alike type things, you know, um, it's, it's definitely one of those struggles. Um, mm. but yeah. So in, in that regard, you know, you, you've done, you know, all these episodes as well. Um, how many, because you, you, you've done, if I remember correctly, as this episode's being recorded, you've released, I believe, four this past week. Um, what was, like, the highest amount you guys have ever, like, put out <laughs> in, in a week span? <laughs> oh, boy. God, God, God you lied. <laughs> 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 you ass. All right. So, oh, boy. Rap by my own doing. And I have this motto when I'm recording episodes is we, I want to always record more episodes than we post because I don't want to leave the uh, have like a requirement that the guests show up because we all know life happens there's things you got to take care of I'd much rather the person do what's important to them and what's more necessary than talking to a couple of fur balls on the internet but I'd say probably the most we've done I'd say it's like what seven or eight in a week span we've recorded in, in a week yeah, that was oh, a mistake. Yeah, Between yeah, doing a day yeah. job and then recording and yeah. then editing those, yeah. and, oh dear lord! <laughs> <laughs> what, it, what what he's talking about is that's before we brought in our secretary, Courtney, and we got to pat her on the back. Without her, we we'd have a hell of a problem. He was doing it all himself, and he was he actually had it where of that was six to seven of them that were practically almost to, on top of each other. I mean, literally on. Stacked on. Oh, I go, why and what? Where'd this person come from? Oh, I just put it, but well, we have this person. Oh, shit. And it was just boom, boom, boom. And it was nuts. And I go, we got to change, we got to change something. So I go, sat there and I go, well, he go, I go, you need a secretary. And he, at that time, he was getting where he was getting him, burning himself out because he wasn't, yeah, between his work workload trying to find we were find, trying to find people and stuff like this and everything else and they were so we'd go out and find or they'd come to us and when you get that and you get them going wait a minute well he'd forget who he had down so somebody else going hey i'd like to be interviewed oh well, well yeah okay why not without looking because it wasn't wrote down they just laid on top of each other. All of a sudden, he scheduled one right behind the other one and everything else like this. I'm going, holy Christ. We got close to getting those seven whipped out, but we did it. But it was nuts. And I go, we need a secretary. So we brought, <laughs> and he goes, so, well, who are we going to have as a secretary? I go, ask one of the, let's ask one of the curse crew. One of the original groups that we've been with that's helped us out when we first started doing our broadcasts and stuff like this. And I go, well, 
Courtney come up. She's a good friend and everything else. She's across these. And I go, all she can do is say no and just have to find somebody else. Well, she said yes, come up and line goes, well, I'll give you my schedule that I like this, give you what the list of the people that are coming in, what their timeline is and everything else. You just throw them up and just write up the calendar set up, excuse me, your way, and we'll just follow it. And it's been stuck since. Mm. And she does a yeah. hellacious job. That girl goes, oh, it's no big deal. It is a big deal. Because if not, we would be we have so many stacked up right now. We'd be pulling our hair hair out. I have more gray hair than I got now. And it's not because of him. It just, it's, it's an overwhelming. And I can understand what he does. I sit there and watch for the, uh, what, what he does for, because we don't cut nothing out. We might ab lib and put some stuff in and some weird stuff but we never chop nothing what you see is what you get it's live there's nothing out we screw up there's a fall a line line gets his legs stuck or the mic gets screwed up there it is it's just it just it's just part of it you know but with this courtney being our secretary one of these days it's gonna get if it gets that big yeah we're happy if it's not and it's still staying at the string we're not gonna stop we're not going to stop just because of the amount of numbers. But if it does get big and it goes crazy, sooner or later, he's going to have to find somebody that's going to sit down and help him with the editing. But right now, we got our secretary. It's a three-man crew. Courtney is. And anybody, and our cursed crew is still part of the group. They're still part of the metaverse. You know, we still ask him sometimes to come in, do like the puddle that we would mean line do for our Patreon setup. You know, we'll pull somebody in as a third party that I like this out of the curse crew and ask them, hey, you want to come in and make it a fill up, blah, blah, blah. Just and it's just content. Just it's a completely different setup. But it's great when you have an, the part, the people that want to help and ask nothing in return. And it's just one of those things sooner or later you got to get something in return because it's it's a lot of time if it ever goes ape shit wednesdays mm -hmm. it's going to knock on our door and it's going to go ape shit me and liar are going to go mm -hmm. what we're just going to yeah. go what well, mm -hmm. and we're going to we're going to look at each other going what the fuck you know but you just go mm -hmm. with the flow of things i was kind of hesitant to bring courtney on initially because I, as Raptor and I have stated, I kind of have a crack, crackhead work ethic. It's like, oh, cool, let's just do seven in a week, regardless of my work <laughs> life, regardless of the family events, regardless of the doctor's appointments, let's just do everything all at once. And I don't want to bring someone in and have them, like, have to follow along with me, like, crackheading interviews and getting stuff done. I don't want to put that kind of workload in someone's life. So when I, Courtney wanted to, uh, agreed to come on. I was a little hesitant initially because I don't want someone to come on without anything of value in return. And when we get to the point where Metaverse Deejan starts making its own money, she's going to be the first paid employee, like almost guaranteed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely, uh, yeah, I, I could not imagine doing, uh, recording seven episodes a week. I, I, I strictly limit myself to, granted, I was busy, you know, with Abby Fair. Um, but I restricted myself to like two to three at most. Um, granted my upload mm -hmm. schedule is a lot smaller, uh, for good reason, <laughs> but, uh, it's one of those things that, you know, it's gotta be a healthy balance. Um, mm. I definitely relate to the crackhead energy though, because, uh, with how many projects that, uh, <laughs> that are in, uh, the VR chat metaverse, mm. uh, it's hard. It's very hard to, you know properly scheduled mm. so it's really cool that you guys you know got a whole secretary to do that so yeah it's go ahead oh sorry no good good the little the calendar system that she does to help us out it's been a godsend especially in in my real life when like i've had friends and family like oh let's go do these things or i need to schedule a schedule doctor because she has everything scheduled there from raptorized work schedules to when and who's coming on what time they're coming on it's been a lot of help and even in my day life to be able to like take that and plan things and get things wrote down in a way that makes sense so shout out to you courtney you're an amazing person you're an absolute godsend to the Love team you, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah. she's a good girl she's an ornery little shit and everything else like this but she's <laughs> she's great and she goes it's no big deal it is a big deal because without her line 
mine wouldn't be here because that was partially what caused his burnout. He had too much loaded on his plate, wasn't slowing down. And I told him, you're in, you got to slow down. And you're going to, you're just going to burn yourself out compared and everything else like this. And he keeps telling me, you know, what, what are you going to do if it decides to fold? I'm not leaving your side, buddy. You're a good friend. I've known you for two years. I'm not going to check, worry about a broadcast to lose a friend over. It's not, it's not that sweat. We do it because we enjoy it. It's not the numbers. It's not, we get a payout. We don't give a rat's that. It's the idea that we're doing something that we like and it's benefiting and making sure. And if like I tell him, it don't matter what you do or anybody else, what they do in here, you get one person comes up to you one time out of all the people that watch your shit and go, I like what you're doing. It turns on a feeling and it says, yes, that's all it takes. It's just that feeling. And then just me saying, I can feel it down my spine. When you have somebody come up and go, I like your content and everything else. And it might be the only viewer we have, who cares? But you've got that person's interest and they like it and go, keep doing what you're doing. I like what you're doing. You can't stop. You just can't stop. It's not because we're, you know, well, we need this. And no, it's the idea. You got that one viewer. And like most people, I tell Lion, 50% of something is better than 50% of nothing. One viewer is still one viewer, no matter what it is. And that's what we pretty much shoot off of. And we get a kick out of it. We get a kick out of Courtney she and everything else like this. And hopefully that girl sticks with us. God, I hope she, she sticks with us. You know, it's just one of those things. I hope she yep. sticks with it. Even if she's got a job, she gets a new job or whatever. Or, you know, she's got a, she's got a life of her own. But we don't really try to overwhelm her, you know. Because she controls it. You know, if we, line gets a lot of people go, oh, God, I got to get all these people up. Blah, blah. She goes, well, no, nope, you only allowed this much. This is what you want. And this is all we're going to put for each week. Blah, blah, blah. We'll just work them on down the list. And we'll, for each time until they're actually on there and they actually get there. She makes sure to keep this boy off his crack high. If you get my drift. <laughs> yeah, that's so it slows down just a little bit. So I remember once when we were scheduling interviews, I got, when I get enthusiastic or happy or excited, I kind of go with the flow. It's like, cool, let's keep on going. And the next thing you know, it's like 40 people are at a week. And now with Courtney, I'm being over exaggeration, over exaggeration on the 40 week, but I'll schedule a bunch of people and Courtney will call me up on discord. Hey, hold the, hold the fuck on a second. Why do you have nine people in this week? Change it. You're going to kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, sh she shuts him down and that's what's great. Cause then it's not an overload for both of us and everything else like this. And it, it'd be different if it'd be different if it, and I mean a big difference if it went globally ape shit and we didn't have to work. It'd be a different story. If we didn't have to work, it'd be different. We could put and get everybody blah, blah, blah in a day if we wanted more. Instead of three a week or four a week, we wanted to get nine a day. That's pretty crazy, but I don't want to see that. But if it does, it does. But, you know, if that's a different story because those people are expecting that, trying to meet what's going on out there. And we're never going to run out of content. Never. Because no. never. The only way we're going to run out of content is VR shuts down. There's too many people here. There's too many people, no matter what they do or how they do it or what they're into, it's the people. And that's what we want. That's the biggest thing, no matter what they do, what they desire, what they've created. It don't matter if they've got a feel for it and got a taste for it. We want to talk to you. It's just, you got to desire you know that you got some people that straggle their feet and they want something they want to go that direction as a creator or a world creator or something like that but even those they're not going to die without them we wouldn't be sitting where we're at now so it's not going to die anytime soon unless they literally shut it down some stupid reason they got to shut it so we're doing okay we're happy you know, we go, we'll find, find somebody. If, if not, we'll just pick on each other like we usually do and throw it out there. It's just him and I just giving each other shit. We don't mind. 
So it doesn't matter. Not at all. Yeah. No, I say, yeah, n knock on, you know, knock on wood, you know, VR chat ever does shut down, <laughs> um, you know, for whatever, yeah. for whatever the reason may be, um, you know, it's definitely, you know, and that's actually one of the questions that I wanted to ask, um, you know, was there any thought, like, obviously VR chat is the platform, you know, was there any other thought to, you know, cause it is metaverse DGen. Was there any ever thought about maybe potentially re reaching out to other platforms? So Raptor and I have talked about this and the similar fashion, I don't want to knock all the other platforms out there. I love you all and you're all amazing, but we want to see something that can, that can sort of stand around VR chat in terms of congruent user base. I know Resonite's brand new and I'd love to bring them on, but I've seen a lot of platforms from the crypto bro bullshit and others as well kind of spring up and get a lot of popularity and then a lot like a lot of the VR chat podcast just immediately tank and I want to see something like regularly be able to function and run sustainably and then have a user base sort of it doesn't have to be 20,000 a, a day like VR chat does but at least a stable base and then yeah Raptor and I have thought about it I've contemplated Resonite brand new looks cool my just dopey two brain cells can't figure out how to get my avatar in there <laughs> <laughs> and, and if he can't i shouldn't have fucking going to open the door fuck no i ain't that dumb to open up that bomb fuck no i have enough trouble screwing up shit but, well we've had a few other ideas don't get me wrong besides sides like that maybe doing we mentioned a few things a few things about maybe a gaming night and stuff like this that we do it, you know, where we get some of the curse crew and stuff like this. But that that's 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 just on the back burner. Mm. You know, we throw mm. ideas at each other like somebody going over and op scrambling eggs. You know, you crack the egg, you get the shit out and you start whipping it around and you just keep adding whatever ingredients you want into it. And then you turn around the line and goes, well, I well, we get this first done and then we go to see where it goes okay and they're there they're they're there they're, they're sitting here just floating but they're never forgotten and everything else and sometimes they come back up but we it mounts on where our door is and how wide open it is hmm. that's pretty much what the yeah. deal is well in terms of like answering your question what are the platforms i'd say the next biggest contender if we can figure out how to get ourselves in there and do what we do here and there would be resonate would be our next choice to look into it seems like there's some things going on i did see uh the cynthia sisters did an event over there they seem to have some pretty cool stuff going over there so i think it's something worth looking into we i, I just got to figure out how to get rapidized avatars in there and know how to use it and then we'll start heading over that way with the occasional oh yeah maybe i don't know i'll say that definitely <laughs> things to give it a try yeah, it's definitely, you know, once again, it's same thought process. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be able to get my avatar over there. <laughs> I, I, I'm not that advanced either. Um, so, you know, kind of on the contrary of that question. Um, so with, you know, instead of going to other platforms, uh, using an example like Altspace, for example, uh, have you looked into interviewing? And maybe it's just because I may not have seen them. I don't know if you have. Um, because there's so many episodes. I, I still have to catch up on all the episodes. Um, <laughs> but uh, have you ever interviewed anybody that came over from like Altspace VR over to VR chat? Because there has been quite a bit. Yes. Yes. There have been a few of our guests that came uh, One of our guests, like Jim, who came over from Second Life. We have a, we have, uh, we did an episode yesterday. I don't know when this is airing, but at some point in the future, we'll be doing a, or having a uh, an episode out with someone named Rue from Kaleidoskai, who's been a platform agnostic with her community. We've talked to a whole, whole, some people from Altspace. So we've had various other people from other platforms on, and we've heard all about them. Yeah, we've, we've done it. Yeah, fair enough. I say I got some alt spacers that have reached out to me actually, or I reached out to them, um, and they were interested. Um, funny enough, uh, I'll say one of them. Uh, I don't, actually, you know what? I'm not gonna reveal it yet. You'll have to wait and see. Um, but <laughs> um, there, there's some community. There's a there's a community that does uh, events every Friday night, uh, and they uh, they did an event, and I saw it, and I was definitely interested. And they're like, "Yeah, we're all you know, all of us are from alt space, like." And, you know, we went over to the VR chat platform, yada, yada, yada. 
and I'm like, that's cool. Like, you know, it's cool that, you know, even though Alt Space, you know, it, it happened, you know, they're still trying to make that community prosper just on a different platform. So, yeah, that's why I was, hmm. I, was, I was mainly, I was mainly curious about your experimentation, you know, with like other platforms or oh. maybe platforms that have came to VR chat. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's also another group of people we've talked with that comes from another platform, the Intermodal Crew, Liam and Kiko. We've talked to them as well. They come from a different platform as well. So we've talked with some other people. Sorry, guys. I I, I have three brain cells. I can't always remember everyone all at the same time. A lot of our episodes <laughs> just smelled in together at this point. <laughs> it's I, I, hard sometimes. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I've only, like with this one, this will be uh, episode eight, and my brain has already started to like, meld them together. So you've made it this far, and they start melding together. I'm already starting to meld things together. I'm like, oh, wait, no. It was this one. No, it was that one. It was one of them. <laughs> I know it was talked about, but yeah. Um, so back to one of the other statements. I, I know you said you enjoyed all of the um, episodes. So I'm, I'm going to bring that topic back up again. Um, if you had to pick one of the funniest interviews you've ever done, like in the sense of like, it's oh, not shit. an <laughs> I got one oh, in mind. Shit. And Raptor alluded to it oh, earlier. Gosh, um, we had a friend of ours, White Strelitzy, come on, and he's a <laughs> dancer here in VR chat. <laughs> and, and so there was, it came to a point about midway through the episode in which we joked about freezing, and that was a conversation came up. And so I, as a joke at the time, decided to go, oh, you mean like this? And threw my legs in the air, and I froze with my legs in the air. And you could kind of see the more it froze you to hear a little bit before VR chat cuts out, uh, sends me the loading screen. These two knuckleheads making jokes, tracking jokes in the background, like, oh, look, lines, legs in the air, blah, 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 and all the background. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's one of the funnier episodes. At least I uh, think so. Mine, mine, mine would be with White. We, we got to re interview them again because they were, they're a couple. Now, their year, year anniversary together, being in the VR and everything else like this just come up and everything. And I just got done talking to him last night and everything else like this. And I've never seen a woman laugh so fucking hard in my life. And everything <laughs> else like this is me doing my stupid skit of uh, <clears throat> jumping off the rock. Like it was, I was doing the Titanic thing with my arms out. That woman lost her <laughs> shit so bad. And she, she had, she was showing people at work this video of me doing this. And she's laughing her ass off through the whole. And remember what I told you? What remember what I told you? It only takes one to get enough to get that you made. And I would, I was, I know him real well, you know, I know him real well and stuff like this compared to our regular, you know, the people we talk to, uh, they're new and stuff like this. And then when they come back again, to me, they're fair game, not to pick on them in a bad way, but I get the dick around. And I mean, dime the dick around. Well, Harley and White, we've interviewed them multiple times, different stuff, our club set up, White, he's a dancer and instructor all this kind of stuff like this. And yeah, the first thing I did when I talked to him and everything else like this, like it was because I was talking to him and <clears throat> I go, well, you're at, for your anniversary of being not like this, we could do the scene all over again just to make you feel bad and everybody could jump off a rock. <laughs> and first thing she does, she puts her hands out. Does that mean I can put my hands out and white can hold on to me and then push me? I mean, she <laughs> <laughs> this is not a broadcast. This is just shooting the shit with these people. This is the kind of people that you mean and you give feel for, and that what makes it great. But that, if you ever get a chance to see that, watch that video. The girl even had it as a ringtone of her fucking losing her shit on her phone. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing about that episode is, is partway in, White, Raptor, and I both got, or no, White wanted to calm her down while Raptor and I was to goal was to try to make her as laugh as many times as we could. And White was wanted it to slow down. And near the end of the episode, this is what made her ringtone. It is uh, she kind of joke of help, help me, laugh, laugh, trying to catch her breath. Please help me. And yeah. then 
Yeah. It, it ended, yeah. and she 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 found that clip so hilarious. She said it as a Discord soundboard. She has it as a ringtone. <laughs> she brings it up as many times as she, as she remembers in every regular conversation, including play scenes as well. <laughs> That's amazing. Girl just came out. It, it's when you like I said, when you have that kind of impact with knowing somebody so well and stuff like this. And I've, I've known White. White's one of my uh, I think sixth or seventh person that I, when I first came in the VR, that I met, that I hung. He was one of one of the original cl- groups, not clubs, groups that I used to be with, and he's the only one practically out of a handful of that group. And we had a hellish, you're looking 60, 70 people that we used to hang day in, day night when COVID came around and everything else. And he's only about the only one practically, except for maybe a few and and, uh, barely six out of that original 60, 70 people that were part of that original group. They're not even on Discord. The Discord group is completely gone. And he's one of the mains that I met, met in here. And yeah, we still hang, still give each other shit. You know, he gives me crap, all this kind of crap. He's a Cali, he's from Cali, all this kind of crap. And I go, one of these days you and I are gonna have to go bump head and have have noodles and shit like this and all this kind of crap and go drinking. And he goes, well, yeah, I'm up for it. I'm up for it. Let's slap this and then just give it hell. And I go, I know I can't keep up. He goes, well, it don't matter, but we're gonna have a hell of a time doing it. You know. That's what makes VR. It's it's who the people you try and it might you might have had a handful of people and you only got one left out of the original because everybody goes their own set and you still hang with them, you still talk to them, <clears throat> all this kind of stuff and everything else. It's just like with Line. He's one of my best friends. I catch a lot of shit. Aww. He gives me shit. I give a lot of shit. But he, I, 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 I he's like a, a younger brother. He, that's how I see Lion. I get, a, I get a lot of crap from a lot of people thinking, well, you be, you hang around him so much, you're dating. Yeah, but I got to broadcast with him. I got to know what's going on. Got to like this. When he is on, he goes, hey, I'm going into VR. Oh, okay, I'll hang with him because I get to feel what he's doing the people that he's meeting newer people because that's the way i am i'll talk to anybody it don't bother me a bit i can do it in real life i can go out of nowhere straight up to people you know it don't matter and go hey how's it going blah 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 like this i could be at an atv set of off-road and a friend goes god i wish i had this or this i go do you ever thought of going to ask somebody nobody's going to give me anything go fine fuck it go over hey i see you have a can i borrow that i'll give you 10 bucks to use it who cares and go come in because you got a lot of balls i wouldn't do something like that i go why what the hell does that hurt you're not going to break it all you're doing is trying to cut off a bolt you know go back and i go well here's 10 bucks she goes no 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 you're fine keep the 10 i appreciate it and then stand there go hand the tool back and sit over there and he's still working on the damn atv and i'm still talking to the guy for the next hour you know that's how you meet people. It, you can't be scared shitless that you think everybody's pulling a knife on you or is going to shoot you. You got to mm. take an effort sometimes to go outside your shell to meet and everything else like this. And that's mm. just the way it is in the same thing in VR. Don't get me wrong. You can be scared to be, you have that right, but you got to, you got to open up, you know, you see some of the, like with the curse crew. Good example. Two people I can tell you right now, Sam and Court, Sam and Courtney. They were, and they both have anxiety bigger than shit, bigger than crap. They really do. But what's funny is, is now meeting through MBH, the person we did helped us get us get us a little bit out the door to, to doing interviews, and we pulled Courtney. Courtney pulled Sam. And everything, and these people only wanted to stick with certain people. You know, she still, they still have it. If they don't know you, they they keep their distance. Hey, that's pro, your priority. It's not an issue. But they're going to events on their own, this event on their own. It's a dance club and everything else. Every Friday on their own. And they're getting danced on by people and stuff like this. And they're having fun. They're going outside their square where they thought they were safe. Now they're doing it on their own. 
And it's, it's just, all you have to do is sometimes just open the door for somebody, take them along, like holding their hand, and you're not saying, hey, you don't like it, back up. There's nobody says you've got to stand in front of the semi and let it hit you full force, take what you want, shut things down, that's why it's here, what they give you, and everything else like this. But at least with that, they're walking beyond, and you're going, holy Christ. It's just like lying. Lying. Line with when he started the broadcast and stuff like this, and I mentioned it before, you know, he didn't want to go up and bother anybody. I don't want to do this. I can't. I started going, okay, I'll go out. I'll go out and find the people. Problem is now he's doing it himself. He doesn't need me. I'm still there for him if he needs me. I still help him as a co a co a co host and stuff like this. But the man's doing it himself. I was doing it, and I'd interview, introduce them to him, and never uh, to him, and then let him. We'd pick it apart to see if they were a jet, or they're really into it, and everything. Now he's doing it himself. He's going out. He's tight. He's mm. he's getting hold of these people online. He's made his own step. He's doing it himself. Mm. Even if one of these days that I decide that I go, I can't take it. I can't do it anymore. I doubt that. He can, I know in my heart, this man's going to go and he can still take it and keep going on his own. He doesn't need mm. the old man well, anymore, but I'm always still standing next to him. He grows up so fast. Well, since you came on, since you came on the channel, is you to help me learn uh, hardcore, a, a old proverb lesson, which is you miss 100 of the shots you don't take. It was because of your guidance and advice and working with you that initially pushed me out of that. I don't want to be a nuisance to people. Although I still kind of go by, I'm going to send you a single message because I don't want to be the, uh, hello, I am yada yada. I do avatars in art. Would you uh... like to purchase art? No. Oh, would you like to see my portfolio in case you want to buy something? I don't want to be that kind of person when I said message people now. I'll send you yes. one and then I'll leave it be and at some point, if they're interested, they'll get back, or if they come through, swing by through curiosity, they'll go to my profile, Twitter, or whatever, then they'll go click message, like, oh, look, he's already sent me a message. I'm sorry I missed it. I'm not trying to be a nuisance, nor do I want people to feel bad, but I'll send a message, and I'll leave it at that. I'll send the shot, and if you want to, great. I don't feel, Raptor and I don't feel entitled to anyone's time. Like, let's be honest to ourselves. We're not special. We're just two fur balls on the internet. So it is mm -hmm. what it is. But thank you, Raptor, for being there. It's appreciated. Yeah. You know, uh, like I say, I go, I don't seem like I'm doing much. But he goes, oh, you do a lot. Well, if you stand back and see what he's actually saying, sometimes you don't look at yourself or what you're doing. You never do. I don't care what you're doing. You could be working on anything, car, whatever, and it goes down there. Yeah, you, and all of a sudden you goes, oh, yeah, yeah, I saw what you did, blah, 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 blah. And I go, I didn't do, I didn't do much. I just fixed it. That's all. All I did was fix it, you know. And when you work with somebody along and everything else like this, I didn't fix Lion. That's not what I'm getting at. I just was standing to be a supported person for a dream that he wants. If you want it bad enough, and I'll say this over and over again, if you have a desire, no matter what it is, it could be in VR, in real life, you can taste it on your tongue and you want it that bad, then beat it to death until you get that taste out of your mouth and you've done it. And it's over. You finished what you kick and start. And then believe me, don't get me wrong, I've got a lot of projects in the garage that I run out of money, and money's usually the issue, that I could not fu couldn't finish it, but they're still sitting there. One of these days I'll get, to get enough, but they're not going. You just got to have somebody push, push, push. And it's not a push that they're trying to shove it down your throat. It's just a tap on the shoulder. Don't forget it's still there. Don't forget, you started this. Keep finishing. Keep going. And that's pretty much me being who I am. I'm just a little person down on the ground going, yeah, keep going, line. we got this. We got this. I'm still here right beside you. I'm not behind you. I'm not in front of you. I'm right beside you. You walk along that person and help out wherever he needs. If he's got, hey, I, well, I need a little bit of input and everything else and everything else like this. Oh, I got your pet. Maybe I'll get somebody else. It doesn't hurt me that he gets somebody else's input. It doesn't bother me a bit. But he asked my opinion. I give it to him. Okay, I got that. I understand. I see it that way. He's 
sees it at its, in a different site because I look at things in different ways. So does he. It just makes that's why we work so great together. We look at it in different parallel lines. There's not, it's not balanced. It's going to be off, and that's why it should be. You're going to have your different opinions with your partners that you work for. I better make sure I say that correctly. Before that out of the Chris crew already claims you're married at this point. Careful all the jokes you throw out. They'll start creating memes. Hey, Moim, yeah, no shit. But you, you get where you're working, you work together and stuff like this. You get your opinions. Everybody's got one. Lion's got his, I've got mine. He gives my point, his point of view. And I do the same, vice versa. You take what you want, you feed off of what you want, and you go down the road the direction you want to go. If you don't, it's not on anybody. It's on who, it's on you. It's not on the person standing next to you. He's just there to help a little bit. It's like your conscience that tries to guide you, but I'm not guiding. I'm just giving a little bit of a point of view. And we just keep moving forward that way. And it's the same way with interviewing the people we talk to and everything else like this. It's so much. Just even, I'm not saying it, but I am listening. And they, I sit there, I stand there, or mostly stand there on whatever object that I can find. And they're sitting there talking to Lion, and you can just see these two going back and forth and just having one hell of a conversation. And yeah, I'm still here. Lion will look over. Like you got something to say, and I go, I just keep go, and he'll turn the camera off me, and I will, I go, what? Like what? You've got the floor. Go, keep going. Talk to the person. You, he's comfortable. He's on the move, and everything else like this. I throw a couple questions in there once in a great some of my times. It's stupid, might be fun, but you know, it's just to break up the monotony a little bit, and everything else like this. But they're on a roll, and. They, they understand that they're, if you, it's one of those things, how do you put it? If you get too many people throwing too many questions at, it, at you in different forms, your brain just goes, and you don't, you just stand back and forth. Well, if you got one person asking the questions and throwing it all, they're focused on you. They're going to come up with the answers that they feel comfortable if they want to answer them or not. And it's not where you got two people throwing that because we already had that problem. When you try to ask one question, you got six people on the floor. It goes nuts. Mm. Everyone's trying so to get the perspective out. Everyone's trying yeah, to be heard. Everyone's mm -hmm. going to have their ego come out a little bit. So, you know, if, and it's, I, I understand where you're coming from. I very much agree. It's kind of hard to do multiple people, either with you're asking two people asking the questions or trying to get answers. It can be a bit difficult when everyone's trying to be heard at the same time. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I, that's what I was like. I mean, you guys are my first ones that I've had two individuals on. So it's definitely a, a learning curve for me. Um, like I'm still learning. I'm at the very bottom right now. I still got to learn in case I ever want to go that route. So it's definitely understandable um so i guess i got one one or one or two more questions um so with the two-year anniversary event uh you guys did the live with rocking horse um you know i've i've heard a lot of people very interested in those type of events you know is there any plans to maybe maybe per certain milestone maybe do that again yeah well Raptor and I are actually already having conversations with that. I've reached out to some communities and see who's interested in doing those live interactive podcasts. The first time we did the live recorded podcast instead of like live streamed as like a test to see how would the event run? What kinds of things do we got to go? And Raptor and I are very much uh, let's spend less time analyzing it and just run with it and analyze it after. And so we did the event for the anniversary. It's like, fuck it. Let's just... Let's just throw ourselves at it, go waist deep and see how it goes. And so from there, we have to have a better understanding of how we want them to run now that we did the anniversary episode. We are actually doing, have in the talks of trying to do those kinds of events in the future. When? We're not sure. We have a world commission. We're going to wait to come out. What, I'm not sure if it's going to be, as, it's going to be exactly as we want it to be. And once it's finished, we'll then start reaching out probably one a month maybe is the idea so far 
one a month we'll do a live event we don't want to overwhelm people or ourselves or over exhaust resources or anybody specifically one a month seems good to us we'll just other than that we'll have the recorded podcast so you can watch one a month you can come show up ask we'll uh, talk with the guest and then the audience whether live streamed or in world will be a vast that the, the guest questions as well of a similar venue so yeah we do have plans for that stuff in the future when we don't know yet we're just kind of running with it with what's going on so far one step in fr- one foot in front of the other uh, uh that's getting dance <laughs> <laughs> i mean you probably dance better than you raptor <laughs> you got legs well no i'm, ta- I I'm talking in real life I did. Oh. <laughs> i'm talking in real life not in fucking vr i can really dance yes in vr you, you ask can i go on can you dance in real life no <laughs> I dance better drunk. Fair. Fair. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> anybody, wow, 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 wow. anybody can dance when there's fucking. Anybody can think that. That's the point. The <laughs> That's, That's, the point. The <laughs> That's the joke. I'm not no. conscious in what no. Drug Lion does is what Drug Lion does. Although no. sometimes mm. I've seen pictures and it's a horrendous idea to re- like let's just rely on Drug Lion. No, don't do that. Don't fucking do that. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen. <laughs> Yeah, boy. Oh man. <laughs> well, boys, it, it's been a blast having you two on. We are getting close to the end of uh, the episode. Um, I guess one one last question, because uh, now I'm pulling an Uno reverse on the Uno reverse uh, on Raptor's question from uh, when you guys interviewed me. Um, I know you guys been interviewed a few times already, but you know now that you've done another recording uh, interview. You know what? What uh? How does it feel to be interviewed and not you know be the one interviewing other people? Honestly, it's I enjoy it. It's it's a unique perspective, as you put it, and when our conversation with you, it is nice to see the things from the other chair in order to be able to get that perspective to ask better questions in order to understand where the guest sits, whether they're the anxious type or very enthusiastic about the moment but it's nice to see things from the other perspective mm. it's fun so thank you for having us on Novit. it's been an absolute pleasure so thank you yeah no thank you yeah, guys it's been great <laughs> no i thank you guys both it's for coming on and having me on metaverse dj and uh once again you know please go check out that episode go check out all the episodes i'm still working through them myself i that there's always a good funny moment at least once in per episode so Definitely go check those out. You know, if you're not there for the information, at least look for the funny moments. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll make sure I scratch my balls more in the corner where nobody's paying attention. <laughs> now that I know you've been doing that, I'll be sure to turn the camera to you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got an inch. I got an inch. I'm definitely gonna what have to. For nothing, man. <laughs> nothing. Leave me alone. I gotta scratch my nose. Okay, I'm here, man. <laughs> I would say this is also uh, a learning experience for me. You know, having you both on because, uh, especially with how small Raptor is, I'm definitely gonna have to like zoom in at certain points. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you still see. <laughs> It's just super small. Yeah, well, yeah it, well, it's funny. It's like you say, with being small and everything, I get people going, why do you do that? Why are you, you are, wow, why, you are small. Because, you know, the camera's up close. They don't see me in the, you know, distance or anything like this. But I get people go, you are really small, aren't you? And I go, yeah, why are you so small? I just say, because people don't see what's down below the below their feet and when you have that expected you're always looking up to see what their avatar does what it's doing you're seeing you get to see the whole perspective when you're low on the ground you see a lot more than if you're up here you see less here but you see a lot more down here <laughs> i bet Damn, you do boy, I see all you yourself at the beginning <laughs> unintelligently <laughs> as the dirty old man <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was literally just yeah. thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what I meant. And it, and it all comes yeah. full circle. Full circle. Boom. Uh, hey, the dirty old man's looking up. Yeah, too bad. It's not what I wanted to see. But hey, <laughs> you went right past the scene. Yeah. yeah there's uh, some crazy that shit. 
<laughs> Raptor's not actually like that as a person. I'm just giving him a lot of crap. <laughs> <laughs> so, before, <laughs> so before we do end the episode, I do want to give you two a chance to uh, promote anything you guys are working on. Uh, obviously, you know, anything that you are shown, have done, all that stuff. Um, and yeah, so uh, feel free to take it away. Mm. Well, we have we have a card with all the fun information and places you can find us. MetaverseDGen.card with two R's dot co. If you go there, you'll have my Twitter uh, where you can find me post random things, memes, jokes, interacting with people. We have a Discord where Raptor and I are always sitting, hanging out, and either editing videos, playing video games. Come, feel free to come over and come chat with us over there. We're usually over there pretty regularly. Metaverse DJ, and we have lots of episodes. Feel free to go in the backlog. We have so many now that you'll be kept quite entertained for quite a while. And every week we post three Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at noon EST. Hopefully, we'll see you there. Yep. Yep. And the other one is we got we got our Patreon, our Patreon for the people that have subscribed called The Puddle. We're still fiddling and still playing. We, we forget, so most of them forget half the time, but we try to get them out there as best we can for our Patreons mm. that have subscribed to us. And we appreciate our subscribers more than you know. And that's pretty much there. That's mm. all we've got that I know of. Yeah. Awesome. I'll yeah. have to bug Courtney and have her remind me later if we've missed anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll edit the description yeah, to throw it in there if you did. Um, but yes, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen and everyone inside and outside the ballpark, uh, this has been episode eight of Nova Notes featuring Lion Turtle, Dirty Raptor from Metaverse D-Gen. Uh, hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys do enjoy everything, please feel free to comment, like, subscribe, all that jazz. Uh, this is probably one of the first episodes I've actually you know, said all that stuff because I always forget to. Oh. Um, <laughs> but I, hey, you, I'm audience. not coming over here to like, help you. I'll get lost. <laughs> I get confused between the two of them now. Hey, you're hey, you. Don't forget this. Like, audience, like, share, subscribe. Novid's video. Go to his channel. Hit the fun subscribe button. Go to the bell. Click all. Go to the comments. Let us tell us how goofy we are and how awesome Novid here is. Just do all the things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I appreciate it, guys. No, you guys have been very supportive. I can't thank you enough. But everyone inside and outside the ballpark, thank you once again for watching. Um, and you know what? I'm going to switch the outro. Hey, Raptor, for old time's sake, take it away. Oh, take it away. Okay. God, that feels weird. Oh, <laughs> do shit. the thing. Do 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 the thing. Okay. Yeah, but I will. God damn it. No matter what you do, folks. When you have two people like this, and no matter whether if they're friends or foes or whatever you want to call them, just want to grab them by the ears. But in my case, all I can do is grab them by their toes. So when you see them, pat them on the back and do me a favor. Don't stretch their balls because they're not going to like it either. <laughs> I sure shit fucking don't either. We'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> see you guys. Bye. See you in the next episode. <laughs> You're gonna love my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna love my nuts. <laughs> <laughs>